The fall. We believe that all men are created equal. To the magnificent mosaic that is America. A radio beacon, to radio beacon. I have a dream. Change has come to America. Believe me. Knock, knock. Who's there? Hey. It's a figment of your imagination. Randy Road Show. Turn up your mind. I want to thank the White House Historical Association and all of the people that work so hard with Melania, with everybody, to keep this incredible house or building or whatever you want to call it, because there really is no name for it. It is special. And we keep it in tip-top shape. We call it sometimes tippy-top shape. I think the bunny looked embarrassed. (laughs) Happy Easter, everybody. Happy Pesach. I think the president had much too much matzah crack. Why do you think they call it crack, okay? It's full of sugar, and it makes you crazy, and it goes on a tweet storm right after it. Too much matzo crack. I I, I can't believe what he's doing, but, uh, you know, uh, on Easter Sunday, the president spent uh, the early portion of the day tweeting really heinous things, ugly things, nasty things about immigrants. Is this and then he 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 you know pretended that he goes to church right so he he went to uh, Bethesda by the sea which is uh, very hoity toity yeah he went there uh, I don't know what did the sight of Jesus make him want to install another Muslim ban I don't know the Middle Eastern looks of Jesus was too much for him and he had to go on a you know a tear against brown people I, I I'm guessing that Bethesda by the sea they have the blonde blue eyed Jesus which is hysterical but. Yeah, I guess that's the one they have. I don't know. But for the past couple of days, our president has sounded like a trailer to our movie about zombies invading from Mexico. (laughs) Isn't that something? Because he watches the freaking Fox News, okay? I I, got to tell you, this is like the most amazing, freaky thing I've ever seen in my my life. First of all, let's just remind everybody about how Trump felt about DACA, okay? Now, prepare to feel like a goldfish out of the bowl. He's flipping, he's flopping, he, nobody knows what. And this is why, this is why we have such issues in our country, because we have a president whose words are meaningless. You remember, I mean, we could pull it for you if you want. We remember when the cabinet went up to uh, the White House and they all sat there and they talked about the DACA. And Trump said, uh, you know, well, let's do the Dreamers first. Let's make it a separate bill. And Dianne Feinstein was like giddy. She was like giddy, like uh, like she ate too many peeps. I mean, like a sugar high she was. That and the uh, assault weapons ban. Woo! I thought that, uh, you know, this old lady was going to live forever just based on the juice that she got from the joy. So it was joy juice. And uh, I swear to God, every time he says something in public at one of these events or around it, then he turns around and he says, no. Now, just so you can be very, very clear. President Trump alone rescinded DACA. He keeps tweeting that DACA is dead as though he wasn't the person who killed it with his own personal little hands. Now, I would say that referring to anything being dead on Easter is not a good thing. Maybe DACA will be resurrected. I don't know. But here's the thing. Here's the deal. Get ready for this piece of information. After he killed DACA, he had this uh, cabinet meeting, remember? Remember? And they all said, uh, they, he said, oh, let's do the Dreamers first and blah, blah, blah. Well, that didn't happen. So then the Democrats said, well, what do you really want? And Mitch McConnell got on the floor and said, you know, when he makes what he wants clear, we'll be able to legislate it. But right now, we don't know where, what he wants. We don't know where he stands. We have no earthly idea what this man wants. And then he said what he wanted was $25 billion for a stinking stupid wall. And in exchange, he would give 1.8 million people, and there's, you know, 700,000 DACA recipients, but he'd give 1.8 million people uh, some sort of a path to citizenship, which Fox News, Laura Ingram, who, by the way, has taken, um, she's taken a little vacation. She's doing the Bill O'Reilly thing. You know, she attacked uh, David Hogg. David Hogg said, who are your advertisers, by the way? And then nine of them, uh, I think we're almost up to a a full dozen now, you know, eggs, right? It's all about a a full dozen, have quit the Laura Ingram show. And now Laura Ingram's taken like this temporary vacation for Easter week, right? Which is the Bill O'Reilly method to staving off advertiser boycotts. And uh, it doesn't work because Bill O'Reilly, as you know, is no longer there. However, I digress. 
So here you have the president, uh, you know, saying, OK, I want 25 billion for a wall and I'll give 1.8 million people a path to citizenship. The Democrats said, OK, here's your freaking money. Take your stupid money and build your stupid wall. The Republicans said no. They don't want the stupid wall. OK, they couldn't they couldn't even hold their freaking noses and, and, and blame it on the bunny. Do you know what I mean? So uh, I, I, listen, this bunny standing next to the president looks smarter than the president. I have to expect it, this bunny when he said the White House or whatever you want to call it. It's a building. It's an edifice. It's an orifice. It's a, I don't even know what I call it. It's the people's house, for God's sake. This man has no clue what he's talking But he says we refer to it as being in tip top, sh- tippy top, tippy top. Now, this is what the girls all say. You want to watch the telly telly? Remember? Summer Zervos. Want to watch the telly telly? Ooh. So he does talk like this in Hopi Hicks, and now he says it's in Tippy Tippy, you know, Tippy Tippy Top shit. I mean, the man is like, uh, he's 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 got arrested development. There's something uh, really stinking wrong with him. If he came to Oseda, even though I was, and this should tell you everything you need to know about my Passover, which was joyous and wonderful, and of course we spent it with Karen and Steve. Karen and Steve and, and, and me and Howard ought to just move in together. We spent every weekend together, no matter what state we're in. It was their son that got married in Texas. So then we go to Texas. Now we have, uh, you know, a Pesach and uh, we're together. You know, just cut the, 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 the mortgages in half. Karen, Steve, move on in. Just come on over. Stay with us forever. But anyway, I was the youngest one at our Pesach dinner, which means I had to ask the four questions, which I haven't done since I'm like 12. And, you know, it's like embedded in you, like the Christianity is in you. It's embedded in me, the Hebrew. And I did it. I did it. But if Trump came to our Pesach, even though I'm the youngest one chronologically, I would have made him read the four questions because he's the most juvenile person in the room, whatever room he's in. The freaking bunny looked more uh, like he had more dignity. And he's wearing a bunny suit. You look at Melania uh, and Trump and a bunny. And, and I don't mean Karen McDougal. That's another photo of Melania Trump and a different kind of bunny. Karen McDougal was the Playboy bunny, and she's wearing the bunny costume standing next to Trump and Melania. This man is disgusting. But now he's talking about zombies invading Mexico. Zombies invading Mexico. I will immediately terminate President Obama's illegal executive order on immigration immediately it's a very very tough subject we are going to deal with daca with heart this should be a bipartisan bill this should be a bill of love love truly it should be a bill of love and we can do that josh how do you explain today his hard line well, basically, as we saw from that clip, Trump has been on literally every side of this issue, and there, <laughs> there was a possibility to do a deal. Democrats would have been willing to give Trump money for his border wall in exchange for legalizing the DACA kids. It was Trump who decided not to do that uh, because he was worried about blowback. Uh, from his right-wing base. I think the more recent problem with Trump and DACA has been uh, the omnibus spending bill that Trump signed had large increases in spending in almost every area except the border wall. And as soon as that legislation was signed, Trump began to get a lot of heat from right-wing media, from Breitbart News, from Ann Coulter. Uh, This is evidently conveyed to him during the dinners he had with the Fox News hosts at Mar-a-Lago this weekend. Uh, So I think foremost in Trump's mind right now is the idea that his base is angry angry and restless and that they might uh, abandon Republicans in November. And I think that explains why Trump has suddenly pivoted to a hardline position on DACA. Sweet Jesus. (laughs) Seriously, he's appealing to the white supremacists again. I mean, it's, it's real nice. Fox News spent Easter getting their listeners riled up to stop people who need help who are fleeing a, 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 a war-torn, essentially, country. You know, they're, they're talking about these caravans. And all I could think of is Van Morrison, which is a great song. The caravans are on their way. I can't play music. <laughs> if I play music, we uh, get the show uh, flagged and taken down. But he's tweeted that Mexico needs to stop the caravans because Mexico's border laws work as opposed to our country, which has no effective border laws. 
What the president is now saying is he wants Mexico not only to pay for the wall, but he wants them to staff it, too. Border agents, he says, ICE are great, but the weak Dem laws don't allow them to do their job. Would somebody please pinch this man and remind him that he has the majority of the House of Representatives, the majority of the Senate, and he's the Republican president of the United States. What is wrong with this man? You know, this goes right along with the story about, uh, you know, David Shulkin. I don't know if you know that David Shulkin, uh, you know, the VA secretary, uh, he was all over the TV saying that he did not resign. He he was fired. And we all know he was fired because we saw the Twitter feed. Donald Trump, the coward that he is, the crass coward, the guy with absolutely no uh, nads, no huevos, no cojones, uh, no, no nothing, uh, tw- fires people on Twitter. He says it's to maximize the humiliation. What kind of a president is that? But he does it because he's a coward. He's a sniveling, lily-livered, yellow-bellied coward. And so he fires people on Twitter. Now, what's important about Shulkin being fired is if Shulkin's fired, then there is a natu- there's a law that says, you know, that the order of secession over at the VA would be the deputy VA secretary becomes the VA secretary. But Donald Trump wants to put Dr. Ronnie, his own doctor, in as the VA secretary to run a- an organization of 360,000 people. A $186 billion budget, 170 hospitals, and 1,000 clinics. He wants the White House doctor to run an organization that large. And, you know, even the Republicans are very quiet about it because they go, oh, geez, no. This is not going to work. The veterans are going to know that we screwed them again. It's going to be blowback in 2018, November, blah, blah, blah. Uh, And the order of succession, you know, there's a a law that says, you know, how things, uh, how people get replaced at the VA. So let me remind you, the president would rather violate the law than change it. And he has a majority of the House, the Senate. Either he's the most ill-informed, incurious, unaware president that you we've ever, or he's, he just would prefer to violate the law than he would to uh, change it. So that he could put, you know, Dr. Ronnie in charge of this uh, second largest agency in the uh, United States for the benefit of me, our veterans. OK, it's just so now he's tweeting all weekend long about how uh, act now, Congress, act now. Our country is being stolen. Why does he always sound like a lunatic in a bunker? In the Midwest. Some, some part of me makes me feel lucky that he doesn't realize he's president. But he sits around all day long watching Fox News and tweeting out that somebody should do something. Somebody should do something. He isn't pandering to his base. He is his base. And he's not. He's the president. And he's got a Republican majority in both houses of Congress. And then he starts with getting more dangerous. Caravans are coming. Republicans must go nuclear option to pass tough laws now. No more DACA deal. My God, man. We better check Mar-a-Lago for gas leaks, radon, or something's going on in that place. His brain is like poison. Maybe it's kidney failure and the ammonia's gone to his brain. I don't know. What's wrong with him? Clear for takeoff. Randy Rhodes, Air Force. Air 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 Force. Force. RandyRhodes.com. Mitchell Gold and Bob Williams introduces its spring 2018 home collection of classic, modern, and new traditional silhouettes in a vivid spectrum of colors, textures, patterns, and prints. The new spring collection features a modern slant with clean-lined and comfortable styles that pay tribute to iconic American designs from the mid-century to the late 1970s. Experience the new collection in comfort at a signature store near you or peruse the entire collection in e-catalog online. Find a store and shop online at mgbwhome.com. Join the Mitchell Gold and Bob Williams Comfort Club, a customer loyalty program that offers you 20% savings every day with exclusive access to special member-only offers and services like complimentary in-home design. It's free. It's easy to join. Sign up now. Start saving today at a Mitchell Gold and Bob Williams signature store near you or online at mgbwhome.com. 
You're listening to the Progressive Voices Network, and here's a clip from Tara Buster with comedian Tara Devlin from rdtdaily.com. They they must have all received the memo because the the talking point is the Parkland students are bullies. All right, so that's the consistent message that we're getting. So this guy on MSNBC, he uh, slipped it in while he was being interviewed just how, what a bully David Hogg is. David Hogg is bullying people because he it's his way or the highway. He doesn't want to debate. He's not listening. This is what he's saying because he's a bully. That's the message they're saying. You know, it's really hard to listen when you're cowering under your desk, when when the rounds are flying over your head, it's kind of hard to listen. You know, it's a little deafening. Um, and I, then I saw online that they're sharing these memes that say, Emma Gonzalez is a bully. I bullied, It's this meme says. And But that's that's their message. It's, uh, there's, they're bullies. They're blaming them. They're blaming the kids that, saying that they bullied this kid. And that's why he, he came and he shot them, which is, it's such a, it's a lie. And not only is it a lie, it's a filthy lie. It's a disgusting, filthy, dirty Republican lie, but I repeat myself. This is Tara Devlin from RDTDaily.com. That was a clip from my show, Tara Buster, recorded live every Saturday evening on the RDT Daily Facebook page and streamed simultaneously on YouTube and Facebook Live, replayed Sunday, 6 p.m. Eastern on Progressive Voices, or anytime on demand on the Progressive Voices app. Support RDT Daily and the Progressive Voices Network. Remember, we stick together, we win. All things Randy at RandyRhodes.com. Go, go for launch. Speaking truth to power, the Randy Rhodes Show. Uh, the presidency under our constitutional system is not irrelevant. He is the person who signs things into law. And for most of us in the House and Senate, on the Republican side, we're interested and what his views are, and those have not been made fully apparent yet. Well, you have people in this country for 20 years. They've done a great job. They've done wonderfully. They've gone to school. They've gotten good marks. They're productive. Now we're supposed to send them out of the country. I don't believe in that. This isn't conservative. <laughs> I'm the world's most conservative person. Uh-huh. This isn't conservative. This is this is compassion. You always send the dream out executive you're have to, DACA. We have to make a whole new set of standards. And when people come in, they have so to come in. You're going to split up families. Chuck, you're going to deport children. Chuck, no, no. We're going to keep the families together. We have to keep the families together. But you're going to keep but them together. Out. But they have to go. We will immediately terminate President Obama's two illegal executive amnesties. They shouldn't be very worried. They are here illegally. They shouldn't be very worried. I do have a big heart. We're going to take care of everybody. We're going to show great heart. DACA is a very, very difficult subject for me, I will tell you. To me, it's one of the most difficult (laughs) subjects I have because you have these incredible kids. I'm here today to announce that the program known as DACA that was effectuated under the Obama administration is being rescinded. All immigration policies should serve the interests of the people of the United States, lawful immigrant and native born alike. Congress should carefully and thoughtfully pursue the types of reforms that are right for the American people. Well, I have a great heart for the folks we're talking about, a great love for them. And people think in terms of children, but they're really young adults. Uh, I have a love for these people, and hopefully now Congress will be able to help them. We've been talking about DACA for a long time. I've been hearing about it for years, long before I decided to go into this particular line of work. And maybe we can uh, do something. I feel having the Democrats in with us is absolutely vital, because this should be a bipartisan bill. This should be a bill of love. Truly, it should be a bill of love, and we can do that. I'm going to bomb the shit out of him. I swear, that's what he wants. <laughs> so anybody know what his position on uh, DACA is? Anybody? 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 Everything. Whatever is expedient with the base, whatever works with the base. But if Laura Ingram tweets or Ann Coulter goes on uh, the Fox News and trashes him for giving, uh, you know, uh, there is no amnesty, by the way. And here are the rules of DACA, just for those of you who don't know. You must 
have lived in these United States since 2007. You must have arrived in this country uh, prior to 2007, before you were 16 years old, younger than 31 on June 15th, 2012, in order to qualify for a deferred action, meaning no amnesty, no, no, you just could apply, you could self-report, turn yourself in if you met those criteria, and you could get a work permit so you didn't have to starve to death in these United States. I mean, this president has no strategy on this. He has no discipline on this. He has no character. He has no core. He has no real beliefs on anything. There is no process for this. And what's really sad is here you have 800,000 people who have done nothing but educate themselves. And oh, by the way, you can't have any uh, misdemeanors. You can't even have, you know, like a, a serious traffic accident. Nothing, nothing in order to qualify for DACA. And what, what, what he won't tell you, you know, he's blaming the Democrats. Oh, this is all the Democrats' fault, the Democrats. This is not the fault of the Democrats. In fact, when, uh, you know, uh, uh, they voted, uh, they actually said, here's your $25 billion for your stinking wall. And now give us, uh, you know, he, I said to you back then, I'll say it again. He wants to preside over a march, a zombie march of people out of this country he's a deporter and that's what he wants and jeff sessions is a white supremacist and stephen miller with whom donald trump spent easter is a white supremacist and stephen miller just so you know uh was jeff sessions spokesman that's where stephen miller came from that's where uh, uh dearborn also came from these guys these the, the dearborn who's now uh, in Mueller's sites about the russians and making deals with russia and all that uh rick dearborn who set up the foreign policy shop in uh, virginia who did it with Je- uh, he was jeff sessions chief of staff stephen miller jeff sessions uh, spokesperson these are the people that are still hanging around the president to the point where the bunny this morning looked like he was going to smack his forehead and go, oh, my God, how'd I get this gig appearing with a white supremacist? This is true. But you know what? Uh, Trump does not understand how Congress works. He has no freaking earthly clue that if he doesn't like a law, he should advocate and work the phones and go to the hill and, and not spend his weekends golfing with Janine Pirro and Sean Hannity and Bill Shine, who's the chairman of Fox News. This is who he's taking advice from. This is who he's spending his weekends with. It's just so sad and sick. I mean, honest to God, this is what's going on on uh, Fox News, okay? This is like uh, uh, the craziest, uh, you know, news. Th- I-, I-, I can't even, I can't even explain it. Like, how do they do this? There's a small migrant army marching toward the United States peacefully, uh, but wants to cross our borders. How should it be handled? And as often happens with issues like this, we enter a fact-free zone. I mean, you got to fact check the president on this. I mean, first of all, you saw you heard that Fox News rhetoric, an army of migrants. I mean, it's not an (laughs) army. It's it's a caravan. It's a group of folks who are seeking asylum. Mm -hmm. The president tweeted there are caravans as if there there, there are multiple groups of people kind of storming the border. That's not true. It's it's one group there. And as even the Fox News uh, commentators noted there, they will be arrested at the border. You know, they're not going to climb the wall. They're not going to climb the wall, okay? They're not going to climb the wall. But this is what goes on. Oh, by the way, let me just tell you who the caravan is. Let me tell you what it is, okay? There's 1,200 people who are, uh, they're called uh, Pueblo San Fronteras, which means uh, towns without borders okay and uh, they're traveling through the united states uh, they're traveling uh, to the united states through mexico from honduras they're seeking asylum here asylum because of the violence uh, honduras has the highest murder rates in the world in the world okay and it's all about the drugs and it's all about the illegal guns going over the borders and down through central america and i know a little something about central america okay and so these people are coming from honduras trying to seek asylum okay asylum and they are also uh, fleeing because uh the their president who is a corrupt little you know dictator juan orlando hernandez um got reelected in a fraudulent election and there were violent protests and uh, there was massive voter fraud you know, uh, in Honduras, which we are starting to look more like than less like. And so uh, the people of Honduras, a third of them are going to seek asylum in Mexico. 
and uh, two-thirds of them are going to seek asylum. They're not going to jump the border. They're not going to come here illegally. They are going to request interviews to seek asylum because if they stay there, they will die. They will be shot and killed or uh, uh, they, they will be jailed for protesting their dictator of a president, okay? So the people of uh, Honduras are quoted and they said if this caravan bothers him, then it should also then it also bothers me that he supported people like Juan Orlando Hernandez, who oppresses the people, destroys the economy of the country and created a humanitarian crisis. We didn't create the humanitarian crisis. They want to stop the humanitarian crisis in Honduras. How? By stopping these people? This crisis is in Honduras, and he was part of the chaos that occurred in the country. That is what they're saying. Now, they only want to have, uh, you know, interviews. That's all they want. They want, uh, you know, to be interviewed uh, to see if they meet the requirements to seek asylum in the United States. However, Fox News is making it sound as if we're being invaded by a zombie force. Now, why are they traveling 1,200 together? To avoid being raped, to avoid being trafficked, to avoid being taken. That's why they're traveling in a big group. Jesus, you'd never know it. He was actually tweeting in his motorcade as he went from Mar-a-Lago over to Bethesda by the Sea Church. And his topic was our southern border. That's right. He was saying that the DACA deal is done. Hey, we gave the Democrats a chance to pass this bill what? Um, and allow the 800,000 plus the 1.8 million mm-hmm. to stay in the country. Well, guess what? That deal is done. So he interpreted uh, the fact that DACA is not done and that maybe it's going to be coming down in the future, that maybe somebody down south in Central America is getting the green light to come to America because if you're here already, you'll get instant citizenship or a pathway to citizenship, unlike the illegals that are here. So we're Regardless of the school of thought, next thing you know, there is footage and a caravan that that includes about a thousand people, including women and children, Mm -hmm. most of which from Honduras, that are making their way our direction and possibly to overwhelm the border guards. And being that we don't have a wall, nor are we really constructing one, the president feels the frustration of something happening that happened to President Obama back in 2014. All right. So the president tweeted this out yesterday. He said border patrol agents are not allowed to properly do their jobs at the border because of ridiculous liberal Democrat laws like catch and release. Mm -hmm. Getting more dangerous. Caravans coming. Republicans must go to nuclear option to pass tough laws now. No more DACA deal. He's saying that what the catch and the release program is unbelievable because once they step foot, you've got 1,100 people, 1,200 people walking up to step foot into the United States. Once they put one foot on our soil, it is we have we have to take them into custody. We have to listen to their reason why they right. want to come in. And if they plead that there's too much violence in their country they or they're say. seeking asylum sure. because uh, domestic violence or they're not treated fairly or they don't have enough what? money, then we have to release them back into the United States. And- They have no earthly idea what they're talking about. She just makes that stuff up, but she spent more time picking out that white pantsuit, that white jumpsuit, which is stunning. Uh, She spent more time picking out that outfit than she did looking at uh, what, uh, you know, what the situation is in Honduras or why people are asking, uh, you know, to stay in Mexico. A third of them are uh, and two thirds of them are trying to get appointments to seek asylum in the United States. She has no idea what she's talking about. You know, she's conflating, you know, the Cuba policy, which is wet foot, dry foot. Right. Cuba, if you can get here from Cuba and you could put a chow on the sand here in Florida, you get to stay. Doesn't work for the Haitians. Oh, no. If Haitians get here, they get the same treatment as Hondurans. Okay, they are uh, arrested at the border or turned around or told to go home or they can, you know, claim asylum. But uh, the only reason why Haitians could plead asylum is because of the earthquakes and there's no running water there or whatever. And so uh, but the Hondurans, they're literally fleeing uh, violence and and a dictator and a a drug war and gun violence and, and, and the caravan. It's 1,200 people. I just, I I can't, I can't understand why, 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 
why they sit there and lie all morning long. You know, uh, uh, the Mexican uh, the, the the Mexican officials, the foreign minister of Mexico, uh, Luis Vidigari, he tweeted a response to the president. He said, every day Mexico and the U.S. work together on migration throughout the region. Facts clearly reflect this. An inaccurate news report talking about these fake, phony networks, and there's another one now we need to be aware of, an inaccurate news report should not serve to question this strong cooperation between our two countries. Upholding human dignity and rights is not at odds with the rule of law. Happy Easter. Feliz Santa Semana. Mexican authorities have deported more than 420,000 Central Americans since the 2014 implementation of the Southern Border Program. It is meant to stem the flow of migrants through Mexico, and they have apprehended almost a half a million, a half a million, half a trillion, uh, half a billion people, 420,000 people, 420,000 people. What is this man talking about? He's making crap up to scare people on Easter. This inva- it's an invasion, everybody. It's an invasion. Here they go. Oh, my God. And then Fox News, uh, Steve Douchey is forced to actually give some facts. Till their court here. And the thing is, you shouldn't look at this as uh, have a heart for sensual South Americans. There are other people on that line applying for refugee status who are in just as dire need, only they're doing it the correct way. Right. They're going through embassies sure. and going through the application green card process. So you've got these this caravan. 1,200 people. Right. Apparently, they're going to stop in Mexico City and ask for asylum there. Two-thirds That's of them right. will probably either seek asylum or wind up uh, sneaking across the border, as many do. What? One third will stay in Mexico. He admits that a third of them are going to stay in Mexico and two thirds of them, he's, oh, they're going to sneak across the border. No, they're not going to sneak. They're going to ask for asylum hearings. They're going to ask that their story be heard about whether or not they can apply for status in the United States as asylum seekers because of the murder, you know, Tegucigalpa, which I'm sure you never heard of, unless you travel a little bit, is the murder capital of the world and it is the capital of Honduras. And that is why these people are asking for asylum in Mexico and they're asking for asylum in the United States. And this president is using their hardship, using the violent, uh, you know, uh, uh, inhuman, inhumane conditions that they live in. I swear to God, you know, the ASPCA has those beautiful commercials with the shaking dogs and, you know, the cruelty and they've never known love. We should do it for Hondurans. To speak to Randy, call now, you bastards. 561-270-3844. Hello, hello. Randy Rhodes. Randy Rhodes. Air Force. Oh, you're baking me crazy. Oh, yes, bacon lovers. It's that time of year. The time to stock up on the best tasting bacon jerky on the planet. And if you've had herky jerky bacon jerky, you know I'm not April fooling around. The tender cuts of pork shoulder are scrumptiously delicious and taste just like the home cooked bacon out of your fridge, except softer and bendier. It's the perfect snack on its own. It's a great compliment to your egg breakfast on a BLT sandwich or dice it up, put it on your egg or potato salad or in any of your salads. One of a kind bacon jerky. It comes in generous 12 ounce bags, and all month of April, you get $5 off every bag. No promo code needed. So stock up now, take advantage of the savings. Customers receive free shipping on two packs or more of anything on their website. So check out the beef jerky, the smokies, the buffalo, the elk, the venison, and the turkey jerky as well. Thank you to all the loyal customers who patronize Herky Jerky, and welcome to all the new ones. Go to herkyjerky.com now. Hello, Progressive Voices Tune In listeners. I'm Casey Hobbs. And I'm Shane Mason, and we're the hosts of Nurse Talk Radio. Here's what we're talking about this week. On the heels of Senate Republicans jamming through a historically unpopular tax bill that enriches their wealthy donors at the American people's expense, the tax giveaway to the wealthy triggered a $400 billion in automatic cuts to Medicare in the next decade. 
Republicans have already announced their intentions to continue their attack on Medicare, Medicaid and Social Security in 2018. Shane, that's the really bad news. But the good news is we have president of Social Security Works, Nancy Altman, with us to talk about all of this. Before we get started, we'd like to play just a short clip of Paul Ryan explaining what he says entitlement reform is. Sure. By 2026, according to CBO, roughly um, all revenues coming to the federal government will be dedicated to interest on the debt, Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security. And that means everything else is borrowed money. It's, it's a function of the aging of America, health inflation. And so if you do not tackle the drivers of our debt, which are entitlements, you cannot balance the budget in the future and pay down the debt. You cannot tackle the debt crisis that's coming in America if you do not fix this entitlement problem. It is just outrageous. It is. This is from a man who just pushed through $1.5 trillion in additional deficit to give tax breaks to the very wealthiest and the largest corporations. The truth is, this is just an old talking point of the Republicans, the truth is that Social Security does not add a penny to the deficit. It is totally self-financed. It has no borrowing authority. Medicare and Medicaid are much more cost-effective than private health insurance, even though Medicare covers the most expensive parts of our population, seniors and people with disabilities, people who have the highest medical costs. It has the lowest per capita administrative costs. Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security are not the issues. We should be expanding Medicare so it's Medicare for all. If we had the same per capita... Call in, connect. To speak to Randy, call 561-270-3844. 561-270-3844. Mexico has got to help us at the border. If they're not going to help us at the border, it's a very sad thing between two countries. That Mexico sad. has got to help us at the border. And a lot of people are coming in because they want to take advantage of DACA. What? And we're going to have to really see. They had a great chance. The Democrats blew it. They had a great, great chance. But we'll have to take a look. But Mexico has got to help us at the border. They flow right through Mexico. They send them into the United States. Can't happen that way anymore. Thank you. They want to take advantage of DACA? You, I don't know how. I don't know how. There's no way to take advantage, unless they want to blow the border so that they can be born here. Uh, I don't understand. You know, do, How do they take advantage of DACA? DACA, you had to have been here. Uh, you had to have been here by 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 2007. You 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 couldn't be more than 31 years old in 2012, and the median age of DACA of the people who did come it was six years old. What is he talking about? Doc Brown is uh, picking up all, all these people uh, and they're taking them back in time so then they can. Oh, back to the future. Ah, see. Oh, 88 <laughs> miles per hour, everybody. That's 88 it. miles per hour. Uh, Randy, that's 1.21 gigawatts we need to create. The Libyans! <laughs> you see how nothing's changed? The Libyans! The Libyans! Yeah. I, 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 back in time, I don't even understand. I mean, uh, these big flows of people are all trying to take advantage of DACA. They want in on the act. So they're apparently coming here to be born here. I don't understand what he's talking about. And frankly, neither does Mitch McConnell, who is the Senate Majority Leader, and neither does Paul Ryan, who is the House Speaker. Nobody understands what he's talking about or what he wants or what, because the Democrats said, here's your 25 bill, go build your stupid wall, and then just get, you know, uh, reinstate DACA. Because he's the one who killed it. I don't understand. You know, and why does anybody listen to this man? Whatever he says is completely and utterly meaningless. And then he goes and he plays golf all day, all night with Sean Hannity and Janine Pirro and, and, and Bill Shine from Fox News. I mean, this is crazy. This is his cabinet now. Fox News news models are his cabinet now. John Kelly was nowhere to be found down there. And, uh, uh, you know, John, Ke- they are marginalizing him so that all the people that want access to the president can have access to the president. And John Kelly was like, uh, no, no. And, and, and he's, he's sitting there with Stephen Miller, a white supremacist. He's talking to Bannon on the phone. He's, you know, uh, 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 listening to Jeff Sessions, who's a white supremacist from Alabama, endorsing pedophiles. 
for the Senate. I mean, this is just mass madness. This is craziness. And all why? Because you have 1,200 people who understand that they need to move in a group, a large group, to blunt the efforts of criminal gangs and drug cartels who like to isolate and rob immigrants who are trying to make their way through Central America up into Mexico. And some of these immigrants, they have with them all the money that they ever had, all of it. It's all with them because they're making this month-long journey to Mexico City to try and ask to stay in Mexico. As far as the border cooperation we get from Mexico, they've apprehended 420,000 people before they even got to our border who are trying to flee uh, Salvador and Honduras and, uh, you know, little parts of Nicaragua. So, I, I mean, this is just crazy. And this is all playing to his base. This is stoking hatred in this country. It is making people believe a falsehood all the time about people who, uh, you know, mean you no harm, mean me no harm. They want to come here. They want to work in our, our agriculture, uh, you know, uh, uh, fields. They want to pick, uh, you know, uh, whatever. They want to do hard backbreaking work in exchange for not being, you know, found dead in Tegucigalpa. That's it. They want their kids to live another day. And, uh, you know, they're asking for hearings. It's unbelievable. But to be eligible, just so you're very, very clear about this, to be eligible for DACA, you must have lived in the United States since 2007 continuously. You had to arrive in the country before you turned 16 years old, and you had to be younger than 31 years old on, tw- on, on uh, uh, June 15th, 2012. Anyone who comes after that 2007 deadline does not qualify for deferred action, period. End of story. So what happens when you have a president who is literally using his ignorance? I mean, it's like listening to, you know, your stupid uncle uh, screaming at the TV. It's just the most amazing thing I've ever seen in my life. And, you know, some people actually believe that, uh, you know, they're eligible for talk. Some people actually believe that they're going to jump the border. Some people think that these people are marching together because they want to overwhelm border security when the real reason they're marching together is to avoid criminal gangs and cartels who are known to rob them because everyone knows they're traveling with every thing of value that they possibly have on their persons because they're fleeing violence. Jesus. Jesus. I, I, it makes me, and this is what he does on Easter. This is how he spends his, uh, Laura Ingram spends, uh, you know, her high holy days, uh, you know, uh, uh, trashing the character of David Hogg, a kid who has a 4.2 grade point average because, uh, you know, he didn't get into uh, a couple of schools that he applied for. So she goes on a tear and she trashes him uh, while she's sitting there uh, on Ash Wednesday with the the ashes. I mean, it's unbelievable. And then Trump leaves the church where I guess he saw a Middle Eastern Jesus and thought, well, damn it, I can't have my Muslim ban, so I'll attack other brown people. I'll attack Hondurans? Really? Hondurans? Are you out of your mind? And then he, And then the last tweet he sends... This was his finisher, okay? This was his, uh, you know, his, his, his closing. N- all caps. Need wall. Need wall. Now, that's the kind of thing you read on a sandwich board worn by a guy with a bullhorn, five coats, and a tinfoil hat. Or, as I like to refer to it, Steve Bannon. Holy crap, this man is really, uh, he's dangerous, and everybody knows it. And you just keep saying, hurry up, Mueller, hurry up, Mueller, hurry up, please, please, please. And now, and now, 
You got Alan Dershowitz on the TV, and he's saying, well, there's no legal standard for impeachment, and so we don't know, and we don't know if we can indict a president, and we don't know, and maybe we'll just get stuck with a criminal president who's a traitor to the United States, who is, you know, uh, a a guy who, who engaged in sedition against our country by taking stolen goods from Russia in order to, uh, you know, uh, create fake news about his opponent. I mean, honestly, I'm sitting there and I'm listening to Der- Dershowitz and he's saying, well, you know, he could pardon everybody. I mean, there's no, uh, you know, the, the, the power of the president to pardon people is very broad, very broad. And uh, we don't know. I mean, he could. And, and if he pardoned, uh, you know, uh, uh, Gates or if he, well, Gates pled guilty. If he pardoned Flynn or if he pardoned Manafort, you know, uh, the power to pardon is very broad. He could do whatever he wants. Go, but you can't have the president doing things with criminal intent. Okay, yes, the power to pardon is broad, but the president cannot have criminal intent at the heart of the pardon. He can pardon whoever he wants, but not as part of a conspiracy that's a criminal conspiracy. I mean, th- this is the conversation that's going on on the TV. If the president uses the pardon power for a corrupt purpose, then he's exposed to criminal liability for that. If his lawyer, uh, with his authority on his behalf, offered a pardon as a means of tainting or corrupting testimony in a criminal proceeding, then I don't see any basis for saying the president does not have to answer for that uh, in the criminal justice system. But if the president believes that this investigation is trumped up, that Mr. Mueller's investigation is out of control, then why wouldn't he offer pardons? Well, he may believe that, but he may also believe it's out of control because he fears for himself, because he's concerned about his own exposure. And it's precisely that element of self-protectedness that I think threatens the legality of that offer of the pardons, that brings that into question. Uh, Go go ahead. There's a real problem with that, and that is President Bush the first did exactly that. Mm -hmm. He pardoned Casper Weinberger and five people on the eve of the trial in order to end the investigation. And special counsel at that time, Lawrence Welk, accused him of doing that and said he had succeeded in ending the investigation. And yet nobody, nobody suggested obstruction of justice at that point. Thomas Jefferson gave pardons to people in order to help the prosecution of his political enemy, uh, Aaron Burr. All throughout history, we see presidents offering and granting pardons. Once you start getting into the area of inquiring, inquiring as to what the motive of a pardon was, you're really getting into constitutionally difficult areas. Of course, if the president were to take a bribe and give a pardon, right. the taking of the bribe itself would be the crime. The granting of the pardon would not be a crime. I do not believe that engaging in a constitutionally mm-hmm. authorized act can ever be the basis of a criminal charge. All right, let me, I want to move oh the conversation here a little bit. Uh, and, and, and Bob, let me start with you. The fact that Flynn decided to cooperate and plead guilty and not accept the dangling of a pardon did it with miss or, or, or does that tell you something and does paul manafort's decision not to cooperate tell you something with this pardon is there what, what do you read into it i don't know that i read a whole lot into it i mean it may be that mr flynn just wasn't confident that the offer of the pardon was something he could count on huh. Who know, who's to say why he would have done that but if i could again disagree with professor dershowitz the Iran Contra matter did involve potentially questions of high policy, but I don't see that here at all. What's at issue here is whether or not a presidential campaign coordinated with a foreign power to affect the outcome of an election. And that is a core criminal concern. It's been part of our statutory framework since 1966, repeatedly strengthened by the Congress. And I don't see that that bears any analogy at all to Iran Contra. Me neither. <clears throat> Me neither. And, and, and you know, I, I got to tell you, this is just like an amazing thing. So Alan Dershowitz admits that if there is a crime underlying the pardon itself, then the pardon uh, uh, is not so, the pardon power is not so broad. Right. He says, oh, if, uh, if Trump took a bribe in exchange for the pardon, well, then that would be, uh, you know, uh, uh, a cause for um, questioning his motive. Well, obstruction of justice is also illegal and violations of RICO Act statutes are also illegal and money laundering is also illegal. And if the president is trying to uh, uh, give a pardon to a guy who can prove that the president was also, uh, you know, uh, the recipient of laundered money uh, through his uh, real estate empire, uh, then if the president, uh, you know, pardons him, then the underlying crime of obstruction or the underlying crime of uh, concealment of uh, RICO Act violations, that. 
And you know, it's so interesting that it, that that would be a criminal basis. You know, that uh, uh, the president could be uh, tried on. But it, you know, it's just so unbelievable how they're going to stretch this and stretch this and stretch it to the point where no matter what Mueller finds, there's going to be a whole segment of the population that's going to say, "Doesn't matter. Trump's president. He could do whatever he wants. He could do whatever he wants. He can pardon himself." He could pardon himself. That is sick. That is twisted. That is wrong. You have a president who has broken almost every single uh, code of ethics, okay, let alone the law. We're still waiting to see what laws he broke. You know, was he uh, taking uh, foreign money for the campaign? Did he know that he was taking $30 million that was laundered through the NRA uh, from Russian, uh, from an Alexander Torshin Russian guy? Uh, did, did he, uh, you know, uh, uh, what is Felix Sater telling uh, the independent counsel. I mean, we don't know, but Felix Sater was the head of Bayrock Group, which took all this Russian money. His own son, you know, was having meetings with Russians in Trump Tower. You've got, uh, you know, Twitter. Uh, Well, if you have dirt on Hillary Clinton, tell the Russians, you know, I love it. I love it. Especially toward the end of the campaign, which is exactly what happened. You have the president on TV going, Russia, if you're listening, you know, I hope you can find the 30,000 email. This man is obviously a criminal. Alan... We don't have a king. We don't have a king. This is unbelievable. And by the way, the Casper Weinberger pardon was disgusting. Now, what is Iran Contra? Okay. Well, that's real simple. So the Iranians, <laughs> the Iranians had some hostages, American ones, and we wanted them back. And so Ronald Reagan made a secret deal with them to defeat Jimmy Carter, right? And told him, don't turn him over yet. Don't turn them over. I'll sell you tow missiles. I'll sell you Iranians missiles in exchange for the hostages. And just as like Ronald Reagan's being sworn in, the hostages are being released. Well, now he, we sell them the tow mi- and we have to launder the money. We got all this money. What are we going to do with the money? What are we going to do with the money? So they laundered it through Saudi Arabia and they poured it into an illegal war in Central America where the people are now asking for asylum because we screwed up their entire their entire country, their entire peninsula, the whole, it's not a peninsula, it's just, it's a big landmass that connects South America to North America. Screwed up the whole landmass, throwing uh, 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 nuns out of freaking helicopters. And then, and it was completely illegal. It was a completely illegal war. Congress had already told Ronald Reagan, you do not get involved in Central America. We are not granting you any war powers authorities. In fact, we're going to amend, we're going to pass something called the Boland Amendment, and it's going to prevent you from doing military actions in Central America. Well, he took the laundered Saudi money and he put it into, you know, an illegal war in Central America. And then when people got caught, like Oliver North, and they were found guilty of conducting an illegal war. Ronald Reagan pardoned them all. Pardoned them all. It was sick. Sad. And now we're still paying for that. Still paying for it. Oh, my God. These people are just so... They're so bizarre. They are just so strange. They are so weird. They are such liars. And they have no strategy. They never see... You know, like, they'll see immediate instant gratification. Oh, look, I got retweeted by some bots and trolls about a thousand times or 25,000 times, Trump said. You know, he looks at it. Oh, I'm so popular. I'm so popular. But he never thinks down the road, like, what are your policy? Like, uh, the trade wars now. You see the stock market today? Not good. Not good. Keeps attacking Amazon. Lost 7% of its value. And now China is retaliating against the tariffs that he imposed on aluminum foil. And just like we told you, I said they're going to go after our agriculture. They're going to go after our agriculture. Guess what they went after? Our agriculture. They went after grapes. They went after cherries. They went after uh, uh, you name it. I mean, poor Iowa, poor Midwest, where they raise the, you know, delicious pork products, which you know I love. I know it's a, it's an offense to some people, but... Sorry, I'm a I'm a meat eating. And what did they do? They they just put big tariffs on our pork. Big, big, huge. We we export 1.1 billion dollars worth of pork to China, and that's just last year. Apples, oranges, almonds, pineapples, grapes, watermelons, strawberries, cranberries, raspberries, cherries, all are now going to be taxed. <laughs> Full 
commercial free on demand whenever wherever listening experience visit randyrhodes.com for your personal premium podcast today now the top of the hour on the progressive voices channel on tune in presents the green news report 1.8 trillion pieces of plastic weighing 80,000 tons. Plastic pollution within the Great Pacific Garbage Patch is increasing exponentially. Cutting greenhouse gas emissions would save 150 million lives around the world. Americans have grown increasingly polarized in their views on global warming. Plus, the people that put themselves in the way of building this fossil fuel pipeline were found not responsible by reason of necessity. Pipeline protesters found not guilty in landmark new ruling. All of those happy verdicts and more straight ahead. From bradblog.com, I'm Brad Friedman. And I'm Desi Doyen. Stand by for six minutes of independent green news, politics, analysis, and snarky comment. It was this past administration, Obama, that said that we had to choose. Choose jobs or growth at the expense of environment or choose environment at the expense of jobs. Well, you can fool some of the people some of the time, but you can fool the viewers of Fox and Friends all the time. Am I right, EPA Administrator Scott Pruitt? This is your Green News Report. Okay, Desi Doyen, you say the American people are becoming more polarized than ever? I don't believe it. (laughs) Yes, they are becoming more polarized than ever in their views on global warming. That's according to the latest Gallup poll released this week. In a potential sign that the Trump administration's aggressive climate denial may be shifting the public debate, independents have grown more doubtful of scientists' warnings about climate change over the past year. Mm. 65% now know that the vast majority of scientists believe global warming is actually occurring, but that's down eight points from just last year. So it's still a majority of so-called independents, but just a smaller majority. Yes. However, the poll does find that more Americans than ever before now believe scientists' warnings that global warming will pose a serious threat within their lifetimes. But that is still only 45 percent of Americans. Despite these changes, the long-term trend of public opinion, according to Gallup, is still shifting overwhelmingly toward the scientific consensus on global warming. Meanwhile, taking serious action on climate change now could mean saving hundreds Hundreds of millions of lives around the world. That's according to a new study published in Nature Climate Change. Researchers at Duke University calculated the human health benefits of governments taking action to hold climate change to just 1.5 degrees Celsius over pre-industrial times, a more aggressive target than the current 2 degrees Celsius limit that nations agreed to in the United Nations Paris Accord. That study found that meeting the 1.5 degrees Celsius target would prevent more than 150 million premature deaths worldwide by 2030, mostly by decreasing air pollution caused by fossil fuels. Well, don't tell the folks on Fox News they really don't want to hear about saving 150 million lives. A new survey estimates that the Pacific Garbage Patch, that massive toxic soup of tiny plastic pollution in the Pacific Ocean, somewhere between California and Hawaii, is actually much bigger than previously estimated, as much as 16 times bigger, covering an area three times the size of France. Hmm. In a BBC interview, project manager Fiona Llewellyn of the Ocean Cleanup Foundation said that the soup is becoming more dense as more trash enters the ocean. Once plastic enters the ocean, it can persist for, we think, thousands of years. Um, it doesn't ever go away. It just breaks down into smaller and smaller particles, to, into microplastics. Um, and as we've seen, these microplastics are able to enter the food chain. The Ocean Cleanup Foundation next plans to test whether a large year-round collection screen in the ocean can succeed in cleaning up at least some of that plastic pollution. But there is some good news. The New Jersey state legislature has rejected the Trump administration's plan to open their Atlantic coastal waters to offshore drilling. This week, they passed unanimously a bill to ban all offshore oil and gas development in state waters and ban infrastructure that would support drilling in federal waters off the state's coast. New Jersey's Democratic Governor Phil Murphy is expected to sign it. 
Finally, in Massachusetts, for the first time, a judge has found 13 protesters not responsible by reason of necessity, that's the equivalent of not guilty in a criminal case, for their civil disobedience action temporarily blocking the construction of a pipeline in West Roxbury. The judge accepted their defense that they were justified because of the potential environmental and public health impacts of the pipeline and because of the urgent need to stop climate change. Here's Karenna Gore, daughter of four former Vice President Al Gore and one of the defendants. We're going to be uh, demanding that the people who are in elected office and also the corporations uh, who are putting their costs, the costs of their doing business for their own profits, they are putting that cost on the public. They're putting that cost on future generations. And we are taking responsibility to say no to that. Good for Karenna Gore. For much more on all of those stories and the ones we couldn't get to today, please check out our website at greennews.bradblog.com. Find us, follow us, and share us worldwide on the Facebooks and the Twitters at Green News Report. I'm Brad Friedman. And I'm Desi Doyen. And this has been your Green News Report. Please help progressive voices support the Green News Report by stopping by bradblog.com slash donate. The fault. We believe that all men are created equal. To the magnificent mosaic that is America. A radio beacon to radio beacon. I have a dream. Change has come to America. Believe me. Knock, knock. Who's there? It's a figment of your imagination. Randy Rhodes Show. Turn up. Your mind. One moment, please. <laughs> Mexico, if you look at the caravan of thousands of people coming across, I told Mexico, look, you have a cash cow in NAFTA. NAFTA has been great for Mexico, has not been good for the United States. We're renegotiating the deal right now. But it'll still be good for Mexico and for Canada. And when this caravan came in, and this is a caravan of a lot of people coming in, in this case from Honduras, if it reaches our border, our laws are so weak and so pathetic, you would not understand this, because I know how strong your laws are at the border. What? It's like we have no border, because what? we had Obama make changes, President Obama made changes. What? That basically created no border. What? It's called catch and release. You catch them, you register them, they go into our country. We can't throw them out. And in many cases, they shouldn't be here. Many, many cases, they shouldn't be here. What? And after they get whatever happens over the next two or three years, they're supposed to come back to court. Almost nobody comes back to court. What? They're in our country. And we can't do anything about it because the laws that were created by Democrats are so pathetic and so weak. Did we do immigration reform that I missed under Obama? Did something happen there that uh, we just cut? Because I'm not sure what he's talking. Oh, my God. You know, he starts his day later and later because he needs his executive time to watch Fox and Friends and stuff like that there and then tweet like in a storm. Oh, it's I, I swear to God, he's on the crack. The matzo crack. You know, it's a sugar high. You understand that. I'm, I'm telling you. Either that or he's eating peeps by the handfuls. I don't know which he chose. Oh, my God, the man is delusional, and he starts his day later and later, which hurts us. It hurts us. You're hurting me because we prepare the show in the morning, and then idiot boy goes and sits down and says, just garbage. I mean, it's just, and I'm beginning to get used to the fact that he's orange. I'm losing my mind over here every time I listen to him. It's like meaningless little syllables just come flowing out of that that pie hole of his. And you can't make any heads or tails of what he's saying. And it's disorienting because it, it almost sounds true because it's on the TV and we were all raised in an era where if it's on the TV, they would never lie to you, right? Holy crap, man. Uh, what is he taught? This, this is so, he, and when the caravan got here, what? It did What caravans? got here nothing got here i don't even know what he's talking about the caravans were never intended to get here they, they did not do this the hondurans did not bond together in order to breach the united states border that's not what this is about oh my god and then and then after his stupid meeting in the office 
He's meeting with the Baltic states. Now, if you've never been to the Baltic states, oh, these are tiny little slices of heaven. And, of course, the Baltic states are ex-Soviet republics that have, you know, made sure that they are, you know, uh, that they removed. I mean, they, they fought so hard to get out from under uh, the, 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 the communist thumb of, of, of the former Soviet Rep- That's why they're the former uh, of the Soviet Union and become the former Soviet republics. And all that, uh, you know, Vlad keeps doing is saying, you know, screw you, Ukraine, and screw you. You know, I'm invading. I'm taking you. Estonia is terrified. They've, all, you know, Estonia had cyber war. I don't, I don't know if you, you know this story or not, but uh, there was this humongous cyber war from Russia that Russia declared on Estonia and knocked out their power for I don't know how many days it was. We were in Estonia. I went to Estonia. It is the most beautiful place you've ever seen in your life. Uh, they're like, uh, you know, the way that you imagine old Europe. European villages, you know, from the medieval times with stone buildings and mountains and sea, you know, the Baltic, uh, you know, the the Black Sea. And oh, my God, it's so beautiful there. And they just want assurances from the United States because they're NATO members and they just want assurances from the United States that if Vlad does something, your best friend over there does something, we got you got our backs. Just let us know. Oh, so he had them in the orifice, and then he uh, did a, a little dog and pony show where he, you know, uh, he took questions, and he said the same damn thing about the stupid caravan. No matter what question was asked, he just there's a stupid caravan, and now he says, "Oh, the caravan is breaking up." You know, yesterday, yesterday, there was a there was a, a Washington Post article about the caravan and what its purpose was and what had happened to it and what Mexico's reaction to it was. And Mexico has had a very humanitarian reaction uh, to these people fleeing the violence and the strife and the and and, and the death in Honduras. Uh, they, the 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 caravan is it was like uh, about a thousand one hundred and fifty people, um, and they stopped in a town called Mateus Romero which is just south of Osaka in, uh, in Mexico. And they slept there. They slept there out in the open. Uh, this is after days and days of walking. They're walking from freaking Honduras along the roadsides and the train tracks. And so uh, the organizers were trying to get buses to take the participants to their final event, which is in Mexico. It's in the central state of Puebla, and it's supposed to be later this week. And so... Uh, you had a lot of kids. You had a lot of children. You had uh, uh, the Mexican government, wor- uh, you know, worrying about people getting sick. Uh, the purpose of this caravan was to draw attention to the plight of migrants. It was never equipped or desirous of marching to the U.S. border. This is how fake our freaking, you know, president is. This is the this, this fake crap that he spews. This caravan was never intended to go to the United States border. It was supposed to stop in the central state of Puebla in Mexico. That's the, the final event of the caravan, okay? So the idea for these people was never, ever, and I can't say this enough, to reach the U.S. border. It was to uh, get a, a attention drawn to a clear, sensible solution, a nonviolent solution to the people of Honduras who are fleeing their countries. They're fleeing violence. They're fleeing unrest. They're fleeing a fraudulent election that was just, uh, you know, won by uh, 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 basically a corrupt dictator. Um, And so they organized themselves into this group called uh, Puebla Sin Fronteras, which means, uh, you know, it literally translates, Puebla is a town, right? So it literally translates into town without borders, right? And this is why they named themselves that, okay? They were just uh, to to organize, you know, and go to central uh, Mexico for an event. And so Mexico saw that, uh, you know, uh, that there were women and children uh, and that they they weren't equipped, you know, uh, properly and they were sleeping outdoors. And Mexico decided to do the humanitarian thing. Mexico put out, uh, you know, donated clothing for the women and the children and the volunteers in Mexico gave them bottled water and uh, they gave them uh, uh, instant coffee and instant noodles so that they could eat. And they started listening to their stories, which is what the intent was. And the stories were like, uh, here's one person who said, um, I've been threatened with death. I had to leave my daughters back there. I left without money, without anything, just with the clothes on my back. We did this because there was safety in numbers. And we are seeking asylum in Mexico. In Mexico. 
So on Monday, yesterday, this is why I'm telling you, I knew this yesterday. And, and anybody who read the Washington Post, why I say, please read the newspaper, please. The president will sound even more ridiculous to you. Those of you who are having questions about whether or not his words have meaning, the answer clearly is no. But if you read a newspaper, you would know that this was already out there yesterday, that the Mexican government said that they sent out their immigration officials to take the names of the people who were interested in filing for asylum or or for humanitarian visas to remain in Mexico. In Mexico! There are care. There, there are so many volunteers and 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 uh, uh, um, religious organizations working in Mexico right now, trying to meet these people and get these people the paperwork they need to seek asylum in Mexico. And and, and they 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 started uh, you know registering the immigrants yesterday. And the reason why they do you know they do this thing, this caravan. This is not new. They do this every year around Easter time and they dress, some of them dress in biblical garb, some of them carry crosses. It's Easter season and what they're protesting is kidnappings and extortion and beatings and killings that they endure trying to seek asylum in Mexico. They have never gone any further than uh, uh, Veracruz, which is uh, on the Gulf, okay? They never went any further north than that. But this year, all of a sudden, Fox and Friends shared with the president this news that, and left out the part that every year they do this and that they're just trying to call attention to a very corrupt system of government there, a very corrupt, uh, you know, uh, a group of drug cartels that run their damn country, that beat people, kill people, that torture people, that, uh, you know, uh, uh, rape women, all these things, okay? They do this every year. But this year, because Fox and Friends saw it on BuzzFeed, swear to God, saw the story on BuzzFeed and decided to put it on the TV uh, in the on Sunday, the president was doing his executive time at Mar-a-Lago ahead of his golf outing with Sean Hannity and Janine Pirro and and Don King, who once stomped a man to death. Only in America, and they were all talking about you know you're pissing off your base, you got to look strong, you know. So we're going to run a story. This is the story. Yeah, turn the TV on. Turn the TV on, and they distorted this caravan of Honduran migrants fleeing their country trying to apply for asylum in Mexico into our border is being stormed. Our border is being stormed. And Trump went with it and started tweeting out these crazy lies. He wrote, his tweet was, Mexico was doing very little, if not in all caps, nothing at stopping people from flowing into Mexico through their southern border and then into the U.S. They laugh at our dumb immigration laws. They must stop the big drug and people flows or I will stop their cash cow. NAFTA need wall. With all of the money they make from the U.S., hopefully they will stop people from coming through their country and into ours. They're not coming here. So here's what Mexico did yesterday, okay? There was some people who joined the caravan after the caravan was organized and began its journey to Mexico. And uh, Mexico ha has been vetting the people, and they found about 400 clingers, 400, uh, you know, glommers on, 400 people that infiltrated this, uh, this caravan, and they deported them. They're gone. They're back. They sent them back to Honduras. 400. And they've already been sent back. The others are being processed for asylum, either under humanitarian uh, visas or for uh, real claims of asylum or, or, you know, so that they can stay in Mexico. Uh, you know, the Mexican immigration authorities have offered refugee status to participants who qualify. 
And Mexico has said it's not up to Mexico to keep people from going to the U.S. to apply for asylum. And there is nothing illegal about applying for asylum. But we're offering them refugee status, humanitarian visas, and we're offering them asylum here in Mexico. If the United States government isn't happy with its asylum procedures, then maybe it should change its asylum procedures because it is not Mexico's responsibility to make immigration decisions for the United States or any other country. It will be up to the appropriate authority of the United States and the president to decide whether to authorize the entry of any participants in the caravan into U.S. territory. But this thing happens every year. Every year. And by the way, Mexico deported almost a half a million uh, people and does every single year. And Mexico does not have, by the way... Uh, you know, jumping into Mexico from Honduras or any other place, jumping into from Nicaragua, jumping into from Central America into Mexico is not a crime. They decriminalized it. So when the president said they have very strong laws, very strong laws, we have very weak laws, he's making crap up. They don't criminalize being in Mexico without documentation. It's not a crime. It isn't a crime here either. It's a civil violation. But here, here's another little factoid to put into your mental Rolodex as, as I play you this, this, this crazy president continuing all morning with this crap. Most people that are here illegally did not jump a border, did not swim across the Rio Grande or any other such thing. They overstayed their visa. And now... He's talking about militarizing the border and sending troops down to the border to appease his racist base. Clear for takeoff. Randy Rhodes Air Force. Air 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 Force. RandyRhodes.com. Mitchell Gold and Bob Williams introduces its spring 2018 home collection of classic, modern, and new traditional silhouettes in a vivid spectrum of colors, textures, patterns, and prints. The new spring collection features a modern slant with clean-lined and comfortable styles that pay tribute to iconic American designs from the mid-century to the late 1970s. Experience the new collection in comfort at a signature store near you or peruse the entire collection in e-catalog online. Find a store and shop online at mgbwhome.com. Join the Mitchell Gold and Bob Williams Comfort Club, a customer loyalty program that offers you 20% savings every day with exclusive access to special member-only offers and services like complimentary in-home design. It's free. It's easy to join. Sign up now. Start saving today at a Mitchell Gold and Bob Williams signature store near you or online at mgbwhome.com. You're listening to the Progressive Voices Network, and here's a clip from Tara Buster with comedian Tara Devlin from rdtdaily.com. They they must have all received the memo because the the talking point is the Parkland students are bullies. All right, so that's the consistent message that we're getting. So this guy on MSNBC. He uh, slipped it in while he was being interviewed just how, what a bully David Hogg is. David Hogg is bullying people because he, it's his way or the highway. He doesn't want to debate. He's not listening. This is what he's saying because he's a bully. That's the message they're saying. You know, it's really hard to listen when you're cowering under your desk, when, when the rounds are flying over your head. It's kind of hard to listen. You know, it's a little deafening. Um, and I, then I saw online that they're sharing these memes that say, Emma Gonzalez is a bully. I bullied, It's this meme says. And, but that's, that's their message. It's, uh, there's, they're bullies. They're blaming them. They're blaming the kids that, saying that they bullied this kid. And that's why he, he came and he shot them, which is, it's such a, it's a lie. And not only is it a lie, it's a filthy lie. 
It's a disgusting, filthy, dirty Republican lie, but I repeat myself. This is Tara Devil from RDTDaily.com. That was a clip from my show, Tara Buster, recorded live every Saturday evening on the RDT Daily Facebook page and streamed simultaneously on YouTube and Facebook Live. Replayed Sunday, 6 p.m. Eastern on Progressive Voices or anytime on demand on the Progressive Voices app. Support RDT Daily and the Progressive Voices Network. Remember, we stick together, we win. All things Randy at RandyRhodes.com. Go, go for launch. Speaking truth to power, the Randy Rhodes Show. Okay, so now that you know the truth about the caravan, that it's a yearly event, that it was never intended to, to come to the United States border, that it was supposed to uh, end in central Mexico and in a place called Pueblo, uh, that the Mexicans have decided that they are going to offer refugee status to these people, that they, and this is yesterday, this is yesterday, uh, and that they are offering humanitarian visas, they are offering uh, asylum, pleas of asylum to people that they had granted 3,223 asylum requests uh, request last year and 9,626 requests uh, that have been accepted from the year before that were under review, okay, and that this is common practice in Mexico and that, uh, you know, they deport people that aren't part of of uh, the asylum requests or the refugee status or people that just glom on and try and follow them in, right? Okay, so now that you know the truth, here's your president this morning in front of other world leaders, presidents of the Baltic states, presidents of Estonia, Lithuania, and Latvia, making false claims. Now, the caravan, which is uh, over a 1,000 people coming in from Honduras, thought they were going to just walk right through Mexico and right through the border. Mm. As you know, uh, NAFTA is a phenomenal deal for Mexico. It's been a horrible deal for the United States. We're renegotiating it now. But it has been a horrible, horrible, embarrassing deal for the United States. This should have been terminated or renegotiated many years ago. Uh, Mexico, we have a trade deficit with Mexico of over $100 billion a year. And I told Mexico yesterday that because of the fact that their laws are so strong, they can do things about it that hard to believe the United States can't. I said, I hope you're going to tell that caravan not to get up to the border. And I think they're doing that because as of 12 minutes ago, it was all being broken up. We'll see what happens. It was all being broken up as of 12. That was today. That was freaking today. It was in the newspaper yesterday. Yesterday. And and just just to to continue, the, 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 here's Maria Santana from um, CNN Español, which is what I have to watch when I'm in Central America. Okay, she's uh, you know an anchor there, and here is her trying to report what Mexico is doing and what they did yesterday. So one of the organizers of the caravan, this uh, group called Pueblo Sin Fronteras, or you know World Without Borders, told CNN in Español that. Uh, members of her group have not been detained or deported by the Mexican authorities. There's a group of about 400 people who have tried to join the caravan after it already got started. And these people, we confirmed from the Mexican government, they have been uh, deported as of now. But the thousand or so people who originally joined this march, they are still uh, on their way uh, to the United States. And now, is Mexico doing something? Yes, they are. This is what Mexico is doing and what they won't do. So uh, within this group, as, as they have confirmed, they have already deported people who they feel have no legitimate claim to be there or to seek asylum. But they are also offering asylum and humanitarian visas uh, to people with credible claims, uh, including pregnant women, the disabled, and children who are part of this group, hoping to reduce the number that actually makes it to the United States. Um, what they won't do, according to the Mexican government, is deny their right to do this, the right of people, their dignity and humanity to seek asylum. A lot of these people are running away from poverty, from violence in their own countries. They try to draw attention to this. And this happens every year. It's not new. This is something that's been going on this caravan since 2010. Okay. Um, so they won't do that and they will give people due process. They won't detain or deport them while they're in the process of okay. seeking asylum. 
Oh my God! What a free! I mean, what he says is 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 literally ju- it, it, it's Jabberwocky. It's the it, it, it's it's Lewis Carroll, uh, you know, on uh, twelve tabs of acid. I this man just freaks me out. I mean, he just makes crap up and says it in front of world leaders. And so you got to sit there and you have to say to yourself, my God, what is his motivation? What is it? Well, part of it is to appeal to a very racist base that believes that uh, you know there is no Central America. They're all Mexicans, right? Hondurans are Mexican and Nicaraguans are Mexican and Costa Ricans. Well, a lot of people think Costa Rica is an island somewhere in the Caribbean. <laughs> no, it's part of Central America. Uh, and they, they just can't, and they don't understand that this caravan is a yearly thing that's been going on for eight years now in order to draw attention to the plight of people in Honduras specifically who are fleeing beatings and government violence and cartel violence and rape and all these things and this caravan is planned every single year and it's not ever been planned to breach the u.s border they have events along the way and the final event is in central mexico and by the way mexico routinely stops and deports uh central americans in numbers That rival those of the United States. Deportation of foreigners, though, dropped from 176,000 in 2015 to only 76,000 in 2017. Know why? Because fewer people come there. Fewer people are migrating. This is a planned march. A march with a definite end in central Mexico. And here's what the president said Uh, After he lied about the purpose of this march, about Mexico's reaction to it, about Mexico's very strong, strong laws. Listen, Mexico, like I said, decriminalized being in Mexico without documents years ago, years ago. I don't know what the hell he's talking about. And you know what's really sad? He's in negotiations with the Mexican president, Peña Nieto. Uh, There's an election going on in Mexico. Uh, yeah, they have to pick themselves a new president. Uh, congratulations, Costa Rica. They just picked themselves, a, you know, a, 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 an anti... Uh, they just picked themselves a, a president who ran against uh, a candidate who was running on the platform that gay marriages were somehow a, a violation of the Bible and that gay people shouldn't have the right to marry. And he lost. He lost in Costa Rica, thank God. So they just had an election. But anyway... Um, so that's why they do, they've they been doing this every single year. Every single year they do this. So here's what the president says in front of the other presidents of the Baltic states. Uh, the Mexican border is very unprotected by our laws. We have horrible, horrible and very unsafe laws in the United States. Unsafe and we're going laws. to be able to uh, do something about that hopefully soon. Hopefully Congress will get their act together and get in and create some very powerful laws like Mexico has and like Canada has and like almost all countries have. We don't have laws. We have catch and release. You catch and then you immediately release and people come back years later for a court case, except they virtually never come back. So uh, we are preparing for the military to secure our border Mm -hmm. between Mexico and the United States. Uh, We have a meeting on it in a little while with General Mattis and everybody and uh, I think that it's something we have to do this is all to appease his racist ugly black-hearted base who have no clue no nobody is telling them trust me nobody is telling them in the media that this caravan is a yearly thing happens every year around Easter time it is to draw attention to the plight of Hondurans who are living in unbelievably violent conditions who are uh, fleeing poverty from a corrupt government who are fleeing drug cartels who are fleeing rape and violence who are trying to get to Mexico to seek asylum in Mexico oh my god and you know he he just keeps doing this now when you're in a this is just like when uh, you know we caught him lying um, to um, Justin Trudeau in Canada about how Canada has a tra- how America has a trade deficit with Canada and Justin Trudeau kept telling him no sir we don't you don't have a trade deficit with Canada and he said yes we do yes we do and he said no sir you don't you actually do better uh, in trade with Canada than Canada does trading with you 
And then they caught Trump on tape talking to a group of donors where he said, and I didn't even know. I didn't even know what the numbers were. I didn't even know that, you know, whether or not it was true. I just told it to him. I just told it to him. How in the freak do you do negotiations with neighbors, with partners, with allies, with people who do help with border security on both sides of this issue, the north border, the southern border, whatever. I mean, Canada helps us with the northern border and, 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 and uh Obviously, Mexico helps with the southern border. Immigration, you know, border border breaches are down. They're way down. And this president wants a stupid wall. You know what's really interesting, though? He keeps, uh, you know, tweeting about the Democrats this and the Democrats that. The Democrats gave him, literally in writing, they gave him $25 billion for his stupid wall that, that, that will not prevent any, any of this that he's got going on in his head from happening and it is just going on in his head because you know according to the DEA the drug enforcement agency uh, the majority of uh, illegal drugs come to the United States through legal ports legal places like most of them come uh, you know by uh, 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 tractor trailers coming over the border or or or, or people uh, you know driving their cars and they they they've thought of uh, you know genius ways to uh, you know drive these substances into the United States so they're coming over the natural open uh, border where truck drivers and and people with papers are coming in or American citizens are going back and forth right that's where the drugs come in you know what what was what does a wall do to stop that, nothing, absolutely nothing. He just know, you know, he just knows his base is getting impatient. He promised them a wall. He said Mexico was going to pay. There's no way. So the Democrats, Chuck Schumer and the Senate Democrats, when uh, this uh, DACA bill came up, remember, uh, he said, "Oh, oh, oh, all right. Here's your twenty-five billion dollars. Go build your stupid wall." But in exchange, we want you to keep your word that you are going to give DACA, uh, the Deferred Action Childhood Arrivals, the children, that you are going to give them a permanent status and a pathway to citizenship. And you know what Trump said after they gave him the $25 billion? He said, mm, no. You know what I'll do? I'll extend DACA for three years. I'll give them temporary three years. That's what I'll give. And that's what happened to the DACA deal. Because Trump's word is meaningless. It means nothing. He just talks and talks out of that pie hole. And it's all about this this, this Fox News crowd that he surrounds himself with at Mar-a-Lago for Easter, for God's sake. And, and, and they tell him, you know, the base is getting restless. Uh, you know, they're going to turn their back on you. I'm telling you right freaking now. You better do something about immigration. Laura Laura Ingram's, you know, she's out of a job now. Uh, you know, we don't know because of these kids with their freaking gun control. What's wrong with you? Do so- What's wrong with you? You be getting your ass kicked by a bunch of 19-year-olds from, from a high school in, in, in Parkland, Florida? Really? And you haven't done anything? Anything on the border, nothing. All right, we're going to feed you a story. We're going to show you a bunch of brown people. And they're going to be, uh, you know, uh, 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 going to Mexico. Uh, and we're going to tell, uh, you, you're going to tell everybody that they're trying to breach the U.S. border. breach the US, And then you're going to militarize the border. Do something, for God's sake. Do something. And there is no problem. There just isn't. And this is just, this is an easy one to show you how meaningless what he says is. This is where Mexico has the absolute power not to let these large caravans, in quotes, of people enter their country. They must stop them at their northern border, which they can do because their border laws work, not allow them to pass through our country, which has no effective border laws. What is wrong with him? He is demoralizing everybody in this country. He tweeted about the Justice Department and put justice in quotes. He's trashing his own hand-picked FBI director. He's trashing his own hand-picked deputy attorney general, Rod Rosenstein. He's trashing his own freaking people. Why? Just to buy some, some, some stupid people's support in the country. Dumb people who don't They don't understand that the president either gets his facts wrong on purpose or is very confused about what the facts are. Oh, my God. Now, his Congress, by the way, a Republican, 
Because Congress, he's got a Republican House, he's got a Republican Senate. Then he starts talking about, oh, well, you know, we need 61 votes to pass anything. I want, I want uh, you know, Mitch McConnell to invoke the nuclear option. I want him to, you know, do that. And so we only need 50 votes and things will get passed. You know, uh, when they voted on that, and they did, the Senate voted on the nuclear option, meaning 50 votes for anything this president damn well wants, it failed. It failed. It only got 36 votes. I think it was like 17 Republicans voted no. Some smart Democrats voted yes because they understand that if uh, that happened, we could actually repeal. uh, We could repeal. We could repair Obamacare. We could expand Medicaid. We could do so many things if it only took 50 votes because there are 50 votes to do these things. There truly are. But the president is just such a, 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 a damn liar. I can't even, I can't even, you know, I don't even want to call him a liar. It's because it's, it's worse than that. He doesn't have, nothing he says means anything. Therefore, you can't enter into any negotiations with this president as a president of a foreign country, a, a NATO ally, uh, 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 the, the, the deputy, uh, you know, uh, attorney general, the attorney general. His word means nothing. He calls people up and he, to fire them and then he gets scared. He's a coward. And he says, uh, oh, no, you're doing great. And then he fires them on Twitter. And then he denies that he fired them, which matters because what the president says carries a lot of weight. And if he fired Shulkin, then the next in line gets the job. But he wants his own personal doctor to get it, which means he couldn't have fired him. To speak to Randy, call now, you bastards. 561-270-3844. Five six one two seven zero thirty eight forty four. Hello, hello. The Randy Rhodes. Randy Rhodes. Air Force. Oh, you're baking me crazy. Oh, yes, bacon lovers, it's that time of year. The time to stock up on the best-tasting bacon jerky on the planet. And if you've had herky jerky bacon jerky, you know I'm not April fooling around. The tender cuts of pork shoulder are scrumptiously delicious and taste just like the home-cooked bacon out of your fridge, except softer and bendier. It's the perfect snack on its own. It's a great complement to your egg breakfast on a BLT sandwich or dice it up, put it on your egg or potato salad or in any of your salads. One of a kind bacon jerky. It comes in generous 12 ounce bags, and all month of April, you get $5 off every bag. No promo code needed. So stock up now, take advantage of the savings. Customers receive free shipping on two packs or more of anything on their website. So check out the beef jerky, the smokies, the buffalo, the elk, the venison, and the turkey jerky as well. Thank you to all the loyal customers who patronize Herky Jerky, and welcome to all the new ones. Go to HerkyJerky.com now. Hello, Progressive Voices Tune In listeners. I'm Casey Hobbs. And I'm Shane Mason, and we're the hosts of Nurse Talk Radio. Here's what we're talking about this week. On the heels of Senate Republicans jamming through a historically unpopular tax bill that enriches their wealthy donors at the American people's expense, the tax giveaway to the wealthy triggered a $400 billion in automatic cuts to Medicare in the next decade. Republicans have already announced their intentions to continue their attack on Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security in 2018. Shane, that's the really bad news. But the good news is we have president of Social Security Works, Nancy Altman, with us to talk about all of this. Before we get started, we'd like to play just a short clip of Paul Ryan explaining what he says entitlement reform is. Sure. By 2026, according to CBO, roughly um, all revenues coming to the federal government will be dedicated to interest on the debt, Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security. And that means everything else is borrowed money. It's, It's a function of the aging of America, health inflation. And so if you do not tackle the drivers of our debt, which are entitlements, you cannot balance the budget in the future and pay down the debt. You cannot tackle the debt crisis that's coming in America if you do not fix this entitlement problem. It is just outrageous. It is. This is from a man who just pushed through $1.5 trillion in additional deficit to give tax breaks to the very wealthiest and the largest corporations. The truth is, this is just an old talking point of the Republicans, the truth is that Social Security does not add a penny to the deficit. It is totally self-financed. It has no borrowing authority. Medicare and Medicaid are much more cost-effective than private health insurance, even though Medicare covers the most expensive 
parts of our population, seniors and people with disabilities, people who have the highest medical costs. It has the lowest per capita administrative costs. Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security are not the issues. We should be expanding Medicare so it's Medicare for all. If we had the same per capita cost, health care cost of any other country in the world, anyone, we would have surpluses in the future. So the problems, they like to demonize Social Security as well as Medicare and Medicaid, but those programs are solutions. They are not problems. The word entitlement is so wrong. We pay oh, into it's that. it's so outrageous. These are earned benefits. We are being sold a bill of goods. We are the wealthiest country in the world. And if we want an expanded Social Security and expanded Medicare, it means holding our politicians' feet to the fire, ask them if they're willing to expand these programs or not, and vote for people who will expand them. Check out our show at nursetalksite.com and listen every Saturday and Sunday right here on Progressive Voices. Call in, connect. To speak to Randy, call 561-270-3844. 561-270-3844. I, I want to go, first of all, to what Bill O'Reilly said about you today and what you're doing. He said... Uh, that you and the boycott are being directed by powerful, shadowy, radical groups. What's your reaction to that? Thanks for seeing me as powerful. I don't see myself as such. <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, I'm pretty well lit. I don't see any shadowy figures behind me. Um, it, I mean, honestly, if he sees powerful, shadowy, shadowy groups, is corporate America standing with us? Okay. I guess it doesn't really make sense. But what I want to get on from is the negativity in this situation, and I want to focus on what's ahead for our movement. It's really what we need to be focusing on is the positivity and really bringing everybody together. And that's the first thing that we have coming up are the town halls on April 7th that we're trying to get in every congressional district. And I, I think what when Bill says these things, um, and when Laura says these things, it, I, I'm fine when they disagree with my policies. That's absolutely okay. What I have a problem with is when they attack me or anybody else personally. Why? What does that accomplish? It doesn't make any sense. I'm not, I don't have any shadowy figures behind me. At least I don't, I don't see any. Um, I'm pretty well lit and I'm just a kid that uses Twitter. And if he, if he sees me as powerful, <laughs> that's okay. I don't see myself that way. So that's David Hogg responding to Bill O'Reilly now attacking him because Laura Ingram attacked him. And in retaliation, uh, the kid, David Hogg, organized on Twitter uh, a boycott of her advertisers, which freaking worked. And uh, she's, you know, taking time off just like Bill O'Reilly had to take time off. And all he's trying to do is have a discussion in this country about meaningful, solid background checks that will capture people with uh, domestic violence histories, people who are felons, people who shouldn't have guns, people on the no-fly list, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And just, it, it couldn't be more timely. April 7th, he's, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the March for Our Lives kids, the kids from Marjorie Stoneman and other schools around the country that have also experienced school shooters or, 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 or uh, you know, uh, violence, uh, you know, in their uh, movie theaters or violence in their... Uh, ch churches or, you know, got, they are going to go to their local uh, Congress members district offices on April 7th. I think that's a pretty important date. You ought to circle it on your calendar. And here's why. Right now, right now at 447 Eastern Time on Tuesday, April 3rd, I had to look at my watch. I don't even know what day it is anymore. There is a confirmed active shooter in San Bruno, California, at YouTube headquarters. And you can see all the employees are walking out with their hands up. Everybody's, you know, flee. Everybody's, oh my God. I mean, come on, people. Every single freaking day. It's like, I, I, I'm so sick of saying, well, it's Tuesday, there must be an active shooter. Or, well, it's Wednesday, there must be a, a, a school shooting. It's so ridiculous what's going on in this country. We've got a president who says stuff that's meaningless. You know, he, he's talking about uh, crazy stuff, uh, militarizing our border and, and, and Hondurans that are, you know, in caravans and they're breaching the border. None of this is true. None of it is real. Everything he 
he says is fake. He's talking about NAFTA, you know, and and, and, and trying to use Mexico's uh, perceived do-nothing attitude about Hondurans who march every year to Mexico to seek asylum, and they do it in groups so that they don't get robbed. They do it in large groups so that they don't get raped. They do it in large groups to avoid drug cartel violence. I mean, honestly, these people are the bravest, bravest suckers I've ever seen in my life. They do it every single year, and the president mischaracterizes what they're doing and how often they do it and what the result is in Mexico, which is to give them uh, th- this year, at least, uh, refugee status, uh, and previously to give them humanitarian visas, and previously to give them uh, the ability to claim asylum and live in Mexico. That, and then he talks about he's going to use that as a as a bludgeon to do something he wants done in NAFTA. What the what the hell is he talking about? You know, when you talk about the the, the auto industry, I, I beg you to ask yourself this question. What's an import? Huh? What's an import? Because the supply chain in the auto industry is totally integrated between the United States and its neighbors. Auto parts and cars that are produced in every country in the North American Free Trade Agreement have in them thousands of parts that come from America, that come from Canada, that come from Mexico. I mean, it's, there are thousands of parts suppliers that serve the automakers that build the final vehicle. 40% of everything in a car sent to the United States by Mexico has U.S. parts in it. So what is wrong with him? You know, and as for Mexico having very strong border laws, I have to tell you, you should go check PolitiFact, okay? It's been debunked since 2010. The Mexican law was changed in 2011, and it decriminalized the act of entering the country without papers. They in Mexico allow undocumented immigrants in Mexico, which is why they want to go to Mexico and stay in Mexico. They allow them to use their education system. They allow them to get health services in Mexico. And Mexico's border, their southern border, is much more porous than the U.S. border. So why is the president talking about using Mexico's strong immigration laws as a contrast to America's lousy immigration laws or Mexico's strong border as a contrast to the United States' porous border when Mexico's border is more porous than ours is? Why is he talking about these caravans trying to breach? Why is he talking about uh, 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 thoughts and prayers when we have gun violence in this country every single freaking day? Why is he talking about DACA and the and the, and the Democrats killed the border wall deal when the Democrats handed him $25 billion and said, all right, now in exchange, we want in writing from you that you're going to do what you said you were going to do, that you're going to give 1.8 million people a pathway to citizenship. He said, oh, no, I'm not really going to do that. What I will do is I'll give the 700,000 that applied for DACA a three-year extension. That's what killed the deal. And, you know, we've got propaganda in this United in these United States and you know it, it, what's really freaky is that David Hogg is being attacked by Fox News which we all know is 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 the it's the beginning of all these bogus stories you know Fox News is the one that started this caravan story Fox News is the one that neglected to tell their audience that this happens every single year and has for eight years Fox News is the the the, the organ that neglected to tell its viewers that these people were never prepared to or had in their heads to come through the American border that they had an event planned and the last event of the caravan of the March it's a march to bring attention to their plight in Honduras was in central Mexico, nowhere near the American border. Fox News is the is the the propaganda machine that spews out all these lies about David Hogg and smears teenagers, smears teenagers for simply trying to stop all these shootings that go on in this country because 
Anybody and their mother can get a gun at a gun show. Anybody, any mentally uh, unfit person, any felon, any 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 thug, any 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 person that wishes to kill themselves, or any person that doesn't want, they can go to a gun show. They can order it off the internet. They can do a mil- a million things in this country to get a gun. You know, Fox News neglects to tell people that the Mexican drug cartels are all using American guns that flow across the border and that the United States refuses to do anything about it because the NRA likes the sales. Seriously, dude, wake the hell. And now, you know, the only the only thing I could say about the propaganda in this country is at least, at least, when people turn on Fox News, they know they're getting skewed news. They don't mind because it's skewed to make their beliefs seem valid about the United States being taken over by a deep state or the United States being infiltrated by Hondurans or why Hondurans, man? Why? I don't get it. I don't even think these people know that, you know, where the caravan came from. I don't think they know anything about it, but that's because they watch news that agrees with them and doesn't challenge them to think or to read or to become curious or to become oriented into the reality that is NAFTA, the reality that is Mexico, the reality that is Syria, the reality that is this president's words are meaningless. They don't want to hear it. They don't want to know it. So they want. But now we got this Sinclair broadcasting that, you know, they've been on. Every broadcaster has known about this ridiculous company for years and years and years. Sinclair used to be just like mid markets. They owned about 60, you know, uh, 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 TV affiliates. You know, they were uh, always right-wing lunatics. But they are growing and growing. And what's really horrifying is that people who watch the local news don't think that there's a political bent to the local news. Because, quite frankly, the local news typically covers, you know, the cute animal story, the weather, the high school football team, a little national sports, more weather. And then they ask a provocative question at the beginning. Is something on your dinner plate going to kill you? You know, this is what they do. This is what local news is. Nobody thinks that they have a political agenda because most local news teams don't have a political agenda. Now this Sinclair News is putting words into local newscasters' mouths and... Uh, They've been trying to tell you this for a long time, and it wasn't until Deadspin put together a compilation of them all saying the same thing at the same time uh, to draw attention to the, uh, uh, the political agenda that is Sinclair News. And what's really frightening is this is real subterranean stuff. This is real backdoor crap. This is real propaganda because the, 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 the taint is coming from untainted people who are being forced by their employer to do these things. Bloomberg News got hold of their contracts. Now, I've signed a million of these contracts, and i got to tell you, there is something in their contract I've never seen in any of mine, and I've signed some of the worst ones ever. Because when you start now, you'll just sign any damn thing because you just want the job. You just want the job. I've signed on to non-competes that you know, said I couldn't work for a year if I quit my job. Then they said, all right, six months. Then I was able to negotiate it down to three months. Okay? But these contracts that Sinclair has, not only do they have six-month non-competes, meaning you can't even look for a job while you're working for a, Sinclair, uh, for a Sinclair outlet, but it also requires that if they quit their job, they have to pay back 40% of their salary, even though it wasn't collected yet, from Sinclair. Uh, to, they have to pay back 40% of their salary to Sinclair, and no one can afford to do that. They can't afford to quit, because what does a local newscaster make? And, and by the way, it's not just the people on TV. It's the staff. It's the producers. It's the editors. It's the people who do the cameras. They all. It's a blanket thing. Now that's gonna. That's gonna. If that thing gets litigated, my suspicion is that that will not hold up in court. But Sinclair does it to blackmail its own employees into doing things their way. And people are watching these local news, 
things, hoping that they're going to get, you know, a manatee story about a cute manatee, you know, that was brutally, you know, uh, hurt by somebody's motorboat, uh, you know, the motor, you know, and it just, oh. And then the cute little manatee is all saved and everybody loves it and they pet it and, you know, you just end the evening with, oh. Now, I don't think you understand who owns Sinclair, and I think you should understand who owns it, and I think you should understand uh, the issues that they have, and I think you should understand, just like with this caravan story, that this is not the first time that Sinclair employees were told to do something that the owners wanted done that they didn't want to do. This story goes way back. And, you know, people in broadcasting know about this place. They know. But now the public at large, because they're growing and they've got business in front of uh, the president of the United States and they're becoming more and more careless and more and more obvious and they've gone too far and they got popped and exposed, hopefully, hopefully, something will happen to prevent the merger of them and Tribune Broadcasting and Tribune Media, which is a huge, oh my God, because people don't suspect that they're local newscasters in the same way that they know that Fox is biased. They don't suspect that of their local, and that's why it's so, so much more dangerous and more clandestine and more effective. But you have to ask yourself, how, how much more democracy can we sustain when... You've got groups of people in this country that don't know basic facts about a story that's coming out of the president's mouth having to do with a humanitarian crisis in Honduras, for God's sake. Simply explained, easily provable, happens every year. They're not coming here. They're looking for asylum in Mexico. I mean, easy, easy to understand. Commercial free, on demand, whenever, wherever listening experience. Visit randyroads.com for your personal premium podcast today. Now, the top of the hour on the Progressive Voices channel on TuneIn presents the Green News Report. There is no more beautiful sight than an American made. Bad news for consumers, Trump's EPA to roll back fuel efficiency standards for cars. Department of Justice sues California for blocking sale of federally owned lands in California. Exxon's lawsuit to prevent states from investigating its climate change denial is thrown out of court. Plus, listen, I don't know how you survive this one. Environmental groups launch a campaign to boot Pruitt. All of those campaigns and lawsuits straight ahead. From Bradblog.com, I'm Brad Friedman. And I'm Desi Doyan. Stand by for six minutes of independent green news, politics, analysis, and snarky comment. We're going to work on the cafe standards so you can make cars in America again. Wow, you couldn't make cars in America anymore? That'll be news to the auto industry, who just finished seven record years of all-time high sales. Go figure. This is your Green News Report. Okay, Desi Doyen, the U.S. auto industry has been, forgive the pun, firing on all pistons now for a whole bunch of years, right up until this year. One year after Donald Trump takes office. Yeah, and now they want to roll back the fuel efficiency standards. As expected, the Trump administration's Environmental Protection Agency announced on Monday that it will begin the formal process of rolling back pollution and emission standards for new cars that were set under President Obama. Environmental Protection Agency Administrator Scott Pruitt called the Obama-era targets for vehicles starting in 2022, quote, wrong and not appropriate. U.S. automakers heavily lobbied for the change and reportedly intend to use the rollback to demand that other countries weaken their standards as well. The Obama standards had been the single biggest action ever taken by the U.S. federal government to curb carbon emissions. Big oil is the big winner since weaker fuel efficiency standards will increase oil consumption. Weakening the targets will also increase carbon emissions, increase air pollution, and will ultimately cost American families money at the gas pump and in health impacts. Money at the gas 
gas pump because they're going to be paying higher prices for gas than they would have had these standards been allowed to move forward. As environmental journalist David Roberts of Vox.com noted in a recent broadcast, environmental deregulation amounts to a pollution tax on everyday Americans. Getting rid of these regulations is an upward income redistribution. You're taking money out of the pockets of ordinary people in the form of health costs Mm -hmm. and missed work and all the rest of it, and you're putting it in the pockets of industrialists. Auto industry analysts warn that U.S. car makers risk losing market share to Chinese and European manufacturers because the rest of the world is moving toward more fuel-efficient cars. Administrator Pruitt also threatened to revoke California's special authority under the Clean Air Act to set more stringent standards for vehicles sold in California. California and other states plan to sue the Trump administration to block the weakening of these standards. Because they're arguing that California's more stringent standards standards can't stand because somehow that affects markets in the rest of the country? Yes, they want a national standard, which will, of course, be a weaker standard. So, so much for states' rights that Republicans pretend to care about. Exactly. Also on Monday, the Trump Justice Department picked another legal fight with California, suing in federal court to overturn a state law that restricts the transfer of public lands to private buyers as the administration tries to open up more public lands to mining and drilling. The state law gives the California State Lands Commission the right of first refusal over any attempted sale or transfer of publicly owned federal lands that are located in California. So, so much for states' rights that Republicans pretend to believe in. Again, exactly. In politics, major environmental organizations like the Sierra Club and the Environmental Defense Fund have launched a coordinated campaign calling for EPA Chief Scott Pruitt to be fired. The Boot Pruitt campaign highlights Pruitt's deregulatory actions that endanger public health, but also his lavish first-class travel and large private security detail on the taxpayer's dime amid a brewing scandal over his sweetheart below-market rent arrangements for an apartment from the wife of a D.C. Energy industry lobbyist. On Sunday's ABC This Week, former New Jersey Governor Republican Chris Christie criticized Pruitt's judgment. The president's been ill-served by this, and if Mr. Pruitt's going to go, it's because he should have never been there in the first place. Finally, some good news. A U.S. federal district judge has dismissed ExxonMobil's lawsuit attempting to block an investigation by the attorneys general of New York and Massachusetts into whether the oil giant covered up what it knew about climate change impacts and whether it lied about it to investors and the public. The judge dismissed missed Exxon's lawsuit with prejudice, meaning the company cannot bring it again. The judge booted ExxonMobil's case. Yes, she did. And environmentalists are trying to boot Scott Pruitt. Yes, they are. That's a lot of boots. For much more on all of these reports and the ones we couldn't get to today, please check out our website at greennews.bradblog.com. Find us, follow us, and share. Go to for the whole thing and a podcast. Buy a stinking podcast.